Hi guys, this is Tripti Tanvi, a verified educator on unacademy.com. Now how many times does it happen that you substitute your work with your friend's work a lot, right? Something similar to that even happens in substitution cryptographic methods and that is exactly what this lesson is all about. So do watch this lesson, upvote, drop by your comments and share with your friends. Also, you can follow me on unacademy platform. Thank you. Welcome to the seventh lesson of this course where we will learn a couple of important substitution techniques. I am Tripti Tanvi and I am a computer science engineering undergraduate currently living in Bengaluru. My areas of interest include computer security, cloud computing, web development, artificial intelligence and R programming. So the agenda for today is First, we'll look into the introduction to substitution techniques, what it is, how it is, and how popular it is, and how we actually make it work, right? And then we'll look into Caesar cipher and simple substitution techniques. So what is a substitution technique? A substitution technique is the one in which the letters of the plain text are replaced by the letters or numbers or symbols which are different from the plain text right so your plain text letters are replaced by different other letters numbers or symbols so if the plain text is viewed as a sequence of bits then substitution involves replacing your plain text bit patterns with the cipher text bit patterns right so the first technique which we will learn is the Caesar cipher it is the earliest known method and also the most simplest use of the substitution cipher. It was also used by Julius Caesar and hence the name Caesar cipher. The Caesar cipher involves replacing each letter of the alphabet with a letter standing three places further down the alphabet, right? So here the alphabet is wrapped around so that the letter following Z is A. Make a note of this because we often tend to make mistakes here while solving the problems. Now, this is my first step. So we assign numerical values to each alphabet from A to Z. So as you can see here on the screen, I have first written all the, uh, all the alphabets in the natural order from A, B, C, D, E, F, go on till Z. And then I have assigned numbers to each one of them starting from 0 and going till 25. So your A becomes 0, your B becomes A, C becomes D, D becomes 3, E becomes 4 and so on z becomes 25 right now suppose your plain text is meet me after the toga party so we first assign numerical values to each letter of the sentence we assign the numerical values for m e e t m e etc we tend to ignore the spaces between each word right and now once we uh, assign numerical values to each letter of the sentence we replace it by the alphabet which is coming three places after it so your m becomes p your e becomes h your e again becomes h your t becomes w and so on now the mathematical formula to convert your plain text into cipher text is to add 3 to the numerical value of the plain text and then mod by 26 now the remainder is the numerical value of your cipher text right so here as you can see on the screen your m is basically 12 so you add 3 to 12 which becomes 15 and then 15 mod 26 is 15 itself right and 15 stands for p as you can check here 15 is your p hence p is your cipher text right now we look into decryption for decryption just reverse the process Instead of adding 3, we minus 3 from the cipher text and then mod by 26. So here as you can see, P, H, H, W and go on till S, D, U, W, B is your cipher text. So we take P which is 15 and then you subtract 3 from it so it becomes 12. Now 12 mod 26 again is 12 itself where 12 stands for M, right? So M is your plain text. So this is how you decrypt the Caesar cipher. The next technique is the simple substitution technique which is a more improvised version of the Caesar cipher technique. So instead of shifting the alphabets by some number, this scheme uses some permutation of the letters in the alphabets. Now what is permutation? 
it is nothing but a jumbled up set of alphabets so with 26 letters in the alphabet the possible permutations are factorial of 26 which is equal to 4 into 10 to the power 26 which is huge right now the sender and receiver may choose any one of these possible permutation as a ciphertext alphabet this permutation is the secret key of the scheme so here as you can see on the screen the sender and the receiver decide on a randomly selected permutation of the letters of the alphabet so first we write the natural order of the alphabet and right below it we write the chosen permutation of the letters of the alphabet so my permutation is k d g f n s l v till i u o and on top of that i write my plain text alphabet from a b c d e f till z right now for encryption, sender replaces each plain text letters by substituting the permutation letter that is directly beneath it, right? So as I have shown uh, the process through a table visible on the screen, you can see here that your plain text is point, right? So while encrypting, your P becomes M, your O becomes J, I becomes B, N, where is N? Yeah, N becomes X and your T becomes Z right so your point is encrypted to M J B X Z which becomes your cipher text right so these two are the most commonly used uh, substitution techniques simple substitution is just an improvement of the Caesar cipher technique to increase the range of key right now why do we need to increase the range of key because it will make the encryption more secure now if it is known that a given ciphertext is a Caesar cipher, then a brute force cryptanalysis is easily performed. To know more about brute force cryptanalysis techniques, please watch lesson number 6, right? Now for brute force cryptanalysis for Caesar cipher, we simply try all the 25 possible keys, which can't be that difficult, right? Oh, and I almost forgot to inform you that by the end of this course, I will give plenty of questions for practice so that you can have a command on all the cipher techniques. The answers can be found on the internet easily or I'll post them in the comment section. Please do not look for the answers before solving. I would suggest solving the questions properly following the steps that I'll be teaching. Then, to cross-check, you can refer to the answers, right? If there is any particular topic that I might have missed and you want me to cover it, you can share your feedback and I will definitely help you regarding the same. So from this lesson onwards, we will be looking more into the practical approaches rather than the theoretical concepts, right? So that's all for today guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any doubt, please drop by your comment and I will solve them at the earliest. In the next video, we will learn more about monoalphabetic and polyalphabetic cipher techniques. Don't miss that and please upload this lesson and share it with your friends. You can also follow me at unacademy.com slash user slash Thank you so much.